Hey, welcome back, everybody. Um, so for uh, for my next project, um, as I as advertised before, we're going to be working on the uh, the Stug B. This is the Atomia kit, uh, and this is the progress I've made on it um, so far. So the again, and with the Atomia kit, um, you know, largely shake and bake. This is one of their their older models, though, and, and what they did is they um, added some parts to their uh, their Panzer three. Uh, chassis, I guess they're uh, when they released the, I think it was the L that they had, um, and they also did something with the, they were I guess going for some novelty where they uh, allowed you to create a, a working suspension, um, but I didn't, uh, I didn't elect to do that uh, for 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 this kit. So we'll get into that in a minute. I'll talk about some of the construction details and uh, you know some of the the modifications um, that uh, that I have done and will be doing to this. Where the construction phase isn't quite finished. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about, um, and, I, and I think we mentioned this a little bit when, when I was talking about the, you know, doing some of the research for, for the, the Panther. Um, it's great to have uh, references for whatever vehicle you're doing, even though it may not be the specific vehicle um, in terms of the markings. Um, but you, it's, it's great to look at, at pictures of, of, uh, of, of tanks uh, to see... Um, you know, the configurations of the stowage on the vehicle, um, you know, so some of the typical uh, wear and tear that the vehicle would, would uh, be exposed to in the field, um, uh, you know, how the crew would, uh, again, these were, you know, if you think about it, these were kind of homes for the, for the crew of the vehicle for the period that they were out in the field. So they would, they would tie and attach all kinds of things to it. Um, and, you know, I have, there's a number of reference books here that I've been kind of going through and these um, these Peco publishing books are great references. Um, so they're I believe they're they're Hungarian um, based, but there's uh, there's there's Hungarian and English uh, text throughout, and they have these full page pictures. I just wanted to draw the attention to one you know few here that I found in particular very useful. So this is a uh, this is a vehicle from the um, uh, from the uh, one ninety two up to long. And that's, um, I think, here are some star decal markings, aftermarket decals that I'm going to be using, or decals, decals, decals. Um, and, uh, you know, I love the, uh, I love the, you know, the, the multicolored death's heads that they have. Um, so I think I'll be doing, uh, you know, this one here, this, this, this red skull, uh, number 24. Uh, and this happens to be uh, number 23. I don't know if it's from the same, it's kind of hard to tell if this is red or green or, or yellow, but... Uh, again, it's a it's a stuck B. It's in the field, and some of the things that you notice here is, and that I'll probably incorporate into this is, you know, they have these uh, headlamp uh, armored covers. One's closed, one's open, and the, the light in the open one is is damaged. So, um, to me, it give you these really nice uh, uh, pieces for that, and, and they give you this kind of this I guess this nickel photo etch cover for the uh, for the armored cover. So I think I'll have one closed and one down and, and kind of simulate that. So again, looking at pictures, uh, references like that give you, you know, give you that kind of inspiration, give you those ideas and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and again, I, that's something I used, uh, I think I used a good effect on the, on the Panther. So, uh, and then there's another on the next page, and it looks like it might even be the same vehicle. On the next page, you see that you, know, you have the stud, and they've got you know the tracks at the front, so I might try and replicate uh, that with the tracks. Uh, and then what they've done is, uh, I guess when they started running into some of the, uh, the heavier gun Russian tanks, the KV ones and the T-34s, uh, then the crew started putting kind of this improvised um, standoff armor uh, on on the. So here they have a couple of big blocks of wood, uh, wood planks that they put on there. So that might be something um, I look at integrating, and I haven't quite figured it out if I'm going to do that or if I did how I would do that. But, but again, just to have these references and, and these books here are, are great for not only getting that type of information, but also confirming, you know, technical details around the vehicle in terms of the location of welds, uh, because, uh, you know, compared to some of the, maybe the, you know, the newer Tamiya kits and, and, you know, the TACOM kits and Meng, Meng kits and whatnot, um, you know, this this does require a little bit. Of, I think it, it stands to benefit from some detailing in terms of adding some weld seams, and I've kind of done that already around this uh, the side viewport here. Just there's like a thin weld seam that's absent in the kit that I just did with a very thin stock styrene here. And if you can ever, if you guys can ever pick up, so Evergreen has all kinds of um, 
styrene, but this plastruct has finer, uh, uh, you know, this is a, 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 a 0.01 and point, uh, uh, 0.015. Um, and, and these are, you know, a little bit thin. Now, you can always make your own from stretch through, but um, you probably figured that about me now. I'm, I'm all about convenience, so getting these things and, and just using them uh, out, of the, out of the bag, as it were, is, uh, is perfect. So <clears throat> I think uh, later in, this, in the episode today, we'll, uh, I'm going to do a few more weld seams and enhance a few things on the bottom here and on the top. So we'll get into that and we'll show you what I, uh, how, I, how I do that using, uh, using this type of stock plastic. Um, the vehicle does come with a bit of an interior. So let's just pull this off. And the reason why I'm concerned about an interior is because I've got a couple of hatches open up. Now they're only open to show the, there's a gun sight that attaches to the main gun here that, that sticks up, a uh, monocular sight. And then there's a binocular sight that sticks up through here, kind of the, the rabbit ears binocular. So I wanted to have those uh, stand out, but I'm not ex I'm not opening it up any more than that. I don't want to put a crew figure in there, a terrible figure, so I kind of stay away from that. Um, but you do see a little bit of the interior. So again, to me, it gives you a very basic interior. They give you the floor, they give you the gun, um, uh, they give you the, the kind of the rear panel here that uh, uh, where they have some grenades on the inside. Um, they give you uh, a couple of machine guns, a couple of MP40s, uh, a nicely, a nice looking radio that I have to, I still have to paint and, and detail up. But to be fair, when you put this on, you aren't going to see a lot of it. So, you know, if you're looking through these two things, you're not going to, like, even if you shine a, like, if you shine a flashlight, so if this is being judged, uh, and somebody's shining a flashlight down there, you want to show at least something. Uh, in there, you don't want to just have gray plastic or or just the the white interior. Um, so you want to show something, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably put more effort than is required for this, these two open hatches. But uh, a little bit of fun doing it. So um, comes with a good interior, not as not as good as what you might get in the in the Dragon kits, uh, for example. Um, but uh, yeah, good enough for just like having a couple of hatches open. And then on the the back here, they give you um, they they give you this is where the I guess the tow cables would sit. Um, to be fair, the ones that you get in the Tamiya kit aren't great. Um, so what I might do is either leave them off altogether. Um, again, you see pictures where you have the tow cables just kind of draped over and you know from the front to the back. Uh, or um, I have a I have a dragon kit at home that has a spare set of tow cables that actually are much nicer. So I might put those on. Um, Another thing I did is I did thin down the uh, the mud guards, and the reason for that is that again, if you look at pictures, you see a lot of these things have damaged mud guards. And sometimes they they flip. You know, these things are positionable, so they can flip up. Um, so I think what would happen is that uh, the crews would flip them up just to avoid getting um, uh, dirt and debris and whatnot uh, in, you know, in between the the main drive sprocket and the mud guard and the damage. Of course, the, the mudguard's going to lose that battle every single time. So you do see these things flipped up again. But unfortunately, on this kit, this whole thing comes as one piece. So there would be a, kind of a little bit of minor surgery, and I just didn't, yeah, I wasn't, uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel like expending the effort to do it. So what I did is I just sanded everything down uh, and used a, uh, um, a seam scraper uh, just to thin the plastic down. And then with a pair of uh, small pliers, just kind of bend it. So I didn't use any heat. I didn't heat this up. Heating plastic is is risky at the best of times, so that's not uh, not a, uh, a technique I would recommend. Um, but if you thin it down enough, then you can kind of you really can kind of control how much you bend it. And you can see here, I got a free, you know this one's kind of bent up. This one's kind of bent down. Um, the mud flaps at the back uh, are separate pieces because they would uh, these ones. It's funny they didn't do it for the front, but uh, you know, so these ones can go, can be positioned up or down. I did the same. These are a lot easier to do. I just sanded these down and then bent them up a bit. You can see here, it's uh, it's pretty pliable. So, um, what else are we going to do on this? I think uh, we'll experiment with some of the stowage. I think all the the on uh, vehicle tools that come with the kit, I, I think, are fine. I'm not going to bother putting um, like photo etch clasps or or three D printed clasps on these. I think they're um, I think they're fine the way they are. Again, this 
this is more of a painting project to see what we can do with uh, with Panzer Gray, uh, and that was something that a lot of uh, a lot of our viewers asked to do. So that's uh, that's what we're we aim to deliver here. And when we talk about paints, I think the first thing we're going to do is probably the next time you see this, it'll be primed, and my go-to primer is Mr. Surfacer. And because this is a gray vehicle, um, I'm going to I'm going to use this uh, this Mr. Surfacer black, um, and I usually thin this 50/50 with uh, their leveling thinner, and I find that's a great, um, a great primer to use. So that's what we'll, we'll spray. If I look at what I did on the Panther, um, because the Panther is a, a dark yellow vehicle, um, I used I mixed this black with uh, Mr. Surfacer has another color, a brown color that we call mahogany. So I think I mixed it about 50 50 with the mahogany to get like a dark brown. Um, I didn't want to use the black because I thought, you know, if I spray the, the yellow on top of black, that's going to. You know, it's not gonna. It's gonna take a lot of the warmth out of the out of the color. So I think a dark brown is a better is a better base for uh, for a dark yellow. Um, but because this is going to be gray, I think uh, black is going to be the way to go. Um, in terms of paints, um, now I haven't quite one hundred percent decided what paints we're going to use, but I'm really leaning towards these uh, these new to me lacquer paints. So this is a. Uh, this is kind of a new range from to me. It's really what they've done is they've taken the the, uh, the the lacquer paints that they've had out of their spray bombs, and they give them to you in bottles now. Uh, and you can use their their traditional lacquer thinner, or they just release this, which is their uh, lacquer thinner, but it has a retarder in it, so it kind of will have like a, a leveling property. Um, but to be fair, you know, I've sprayed them with their lacquer thinner. They spray on beautifully with their lacquer thinner. You could probably use the the the, uh, the leveling thinner as well. I, I, you know that, that seems to be very compatible with these paints, um, but I think I might try these out um, and and sort of you know like here's the the Panzer Grau from uh, from Mission Models. Um, so these have been my go-to paints. That's what I did with the the Panther with is all Mission Models. Um, but I think and I was initially going to do the Stug using uh, using Mission Model, but I think. Um, I might get away from that and try the lacquer paint. Now the problem with the lacquers is that they stink, and the, you know the fumes are pretty powerful. So uh, when I'm spraying this, I'm gonna have to make sure I'm venting that I'm wearing a mask. Uh, whereas that's a little bit less of a concern when you're using the Mission Model paint. So um, yeah, so I think. Uh, uh, oh yeah, and I talked about the tracks. Um, I think you know. I, the kit, the band kit tracks, they're gonna throw those out as I, as I normally do, um, because this isn't a, an out of the box. And uh, I picked this up from my good friend Sandy. He had a he had a spare set, and we did a swap, and I got these from. Him. So these are Master Club. These are Master Club do really really nice aftermarket tracks. Uh, they have white metal and they have resin. These happen to be the resin ones. I've never worked with them before, but I've heard really good things about them. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll use these tracks, and hopefully there's enough spare that I can maybe do something interesting in the front here um, with that. You know, going back to the picture that we talked about, that I showed earlier, uh, to have that spare saggy track in the front, I think that would be kind of neat. Um, yeah, so I think uh, let's. Um, so we're not quite ready for paint, um, but I did want to spend a little bit of time just showing, uh, you know, how to enhance some detail uh, on a model. It's not. Um, it's not out of the box, but it's not far from out of the box at this point. I haven't used, uh, I won't be using any photo etch on it other than other than the grills that you get and, and the, the headlamp covers that you get with the um, uh, with the kit. Um, but I think it does stand to benefit from uh, some enhancements. We talked about kind of thinning the mud guards and bending them up. Uh, I'm going to add, uh, we'll do that on camera here, I'll add a few weld seams. Um, and there's one that goes along the top here, so we'll add that on. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, and we'll add a few other bits and mobs onto it for uh, for this uh, for today's episode so I'll uh, I'll get ready we'll get Rob a, a chance to adjust so we can get closer in and we'll, uh, we'll start doing some modifications okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some weld seams and um, it's funny to me it does a good job of adding like so there's a nice weld seam here let me uh, get my tweezers out here get my finger out of the way so they they have, they have a nice weld seam here. Um, here's where the the upper hull joins the lower hull from a kit standpoint. Um, so there needs to be a weld seam along here, which we'll add. Uh, and then you also need to add weld seams in here and in here 
to enhance. And the reason why I know that is because, again, going back to the references, so we, we talked about the Peco publishing books. This is, um, this is an old series. I think they're, they're out of publication, but they're a great, uh, great little reference to have. So I managed to find this one on the, the Stug 3D. So this is the B, but the only, you know, there's a lot of the, you know, there weren't a ton of differences between the, uh, the B and the D. And you can kind of see here, so the nice thing about this is they have, uh, they have walk-around shots of uh, this. I think this is from a museum in, in Sweden, I believe. And you can, see, you can see the weld seam for the top here that's missing, that we just talked about. And on the side, um, you, can see, you can see the weld seam here going down the front. And you can just barely make it out in this, in this uh, photo here. So again, having these, um, having these references are great for you know, figuring out not only, you know, what to, how to weather the vehicle or how to, you know, what type of damage or wear and tear there would be on it, but also for, uh, for details like weld seam. So again, um, let's go to the, uh, let's go to our, our Plastruct uh, welds here, or spare plastic. So you can see, so this is, the, so I have two sizes here that I like to use for the weld seams on this. So that I have the, this is the point, uh, 010 inch. And I have the point uh, 015 here as well. And if you can find this stuff, grab it because it's, I mean, again, you can stretch sprue and whatnot, but this is a lot more controlled, so let's grab. So what you do is just grab a bit out and you cut it. And then what I'm going to do here, is I'm just going to lay this in. So this is the point oh one. Oops. So this is the point oh one oh. It's like doing surgery. So I'm just going to lay that in there. This is frustrating. So lay that in there. Okay. So after uh, we finally got it situated in place here, so I'm hold. I'm just so it's not glued on. I'm just holding it in place with my finger, and I'm just going to use again. You're going to use your your trusty Tamiya extra thin cement, and just touch it. There we go just to get it to sit in place. And we are good to go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nip off this end of it here. And maybe get in with these little nippers. Set. Okay, I'll we'll save that for the next piece. So now you can see I've got this this little t tiny plastic rod in place. So I'm just going to finish fixing it. This part up here and this part down here. And then what I do is I take you can take a, a knife or you can even the end of the tweezers here. And you just put a little tiny bit of cement on it. And what this does, what does cement do? It melts plastic. That's how it bonds. That's how it works. So now this is a little bit soft. And I just start adding the weld cuts. And you just go over it. You can see that. I'm just going to pull the gun off. So we don't damage it. Yes. 
and again it's soft from this from the application of the liquid cement and it allows you to put some texture in there to simulate a weld Well, that's pretty much all you have to do. So again, it's a small little detail, and you're probably not going to see too much of it after, um, you know, we we muddy this up. And I think, you know, in terms of the weathering on this, I think I think I am going to put a lot of dust and mud on it. I kind of was light on the last couple of projects I did, the Amex 13, uh, and the Panther. And the reason for that again is you're trying to situate the vehicle in in you know the area it operated in. So with the, with the Amex 13. That was in the Golan Heights. There's not a lot of moisture, um, pretty dusty, but n not a lot of moisture and mud to build up. Uh, and then with the Kursk Panther, um, you know, again, as we talked about, these things were basically taken off the rail cars and sent them to battle uh, and, you know, often broke down before <laughs> they got too far. So not a lot of weathering on that. But because uh, because of uh, the type of vehicle this is and the where it served in, in Russia in the summer of 41, um, you know, I think, and based on the pictures, there's there's a lot of mud and dust and, and whatnot. So, I think there's a good opportunity to get back to that. So we'll go heavier on this than we did on the, on the last couple of projects. Um, so all that to say is that you know the work that we're doing here is probably for naught. But again, just to, it's interesting to show how, we, how you can add some detail. Uh, and certainly, you know, when we talk about the weld scene that we added here around this viewport. That will be very visible, right? So it's not going to get covered up in a lot of dud, mud and dirt because it, you know, it just won't work its way up that high on the vehicle. But so to show um, what we've done here, we'll do another one in here. We'll do the other side, and then we'll do a little bit of a larger one up here. Maybe that's the one we'll do next. I can do these other ones off camera. Okay, so now we're going to do the the larger weld that uh, joins the kind of the top hull with the lower hull here. So what I've done is I've taken a, a piece of uh, a 0.015 rod and fixed it on either side. So now what we're going to do is fix the rest of it in the middle. And still there's a little bit of play on it. So we'll just take our trusty cement and just kind of run it over. Like so, and that will fuse it to the join. So make sure it has good contact. Perfect. So that's in there good, as you can see. Now what we'll do is we'll put, and I think what we might, because this is a bit of a longer stretch here, so we'll work on it in sections. So let's just work on this part here. So I'm just gonna, so put that on there and I'll start to soften the plastic a little bit. Close that up. They may have legalized pot in this uh, in this country, but uh, you know, modeling glue was always legal. So now I'm going to do is I'm just going to start cutting this up, just by applying some pressure. Maybe add a little bit more glue to soften it further. So the trick to this is not to 
like when you're applying the the weld texture, the weld bead texture is not to um, like you shouldn't have to be pressing very hard on it. So the plastic sh should should soften to the point where you're kind of doing just just like what you see I'm doing here. So I'm applying a little bit of pressure, but I'm not I'm not cutting through. I'm not applying so much pressure that I'm cutting right through the rod. You don't want to do that. So now we're starting to get a good I don't know if you can get in there, Rob, if you can see. So you can see here you're getting a nice well texture, which is perfect. And again, this is going to be covered up with a fair bit of mud too, so that's the nice thing about working in armor is you always have that. That safety valve of throwing mud on things. And I want, you know, you can see here where the glue's kind of gotten onto the surface of the plate here. I won't worry about that too much. That's all gonna be hidden when you when you prime it. It's the nice thing about using a good primer is it it'll hide all those. All those little glue spills. And adding welds is one of I think one of the easiest things you can do to an armor kit to give it some detail. And and you'll see with the newer kits that they do a pretty good job. Like I didn't on the Panther, I didn't really have to add much of anything in terms of weld seams because the ones that you know the, the ones that, that, that came with the kit were good and and were where they were supposed to be but when you were working on a, a slightly older kit like this stug this came out i want to say this probably came out a good five six years ago maybe a little bit more and to me it used um, they used a lot of a lot of parts from their earlier Panzer III. I think I think they're they're Panzer III L, and that goes back probably to the early two thousands, I guess. So technology back then wasn't as good is what you get today. So it's nice to be able to go in and kind of use some of these old techniques. But again, using your references is key and that'll tell you where, that'll kind of guide you where you need to go and what you need to do. Now I'll add some more glue. Funny, I remember when I was growing up going to high school first time, grade seven. My my mom rest God rest her soul was um was worried about uh you know, because of that time, you know, there was always the threat of drugs and whatnot. Uh and a good family friend had told her, says, what are you worried about, you know, that he's going to get involved in drugs? He's already sniffing airplane glue all the time. <laughs> so, anyway. Dear Ma. So just apply, yeah, so just keep applying the liquid cement here until, you know, to, soft, to keep softening the plastic so you can keep adding. I mean, I'm just going back and forth. Now, I'm just careful to... Make sure when I'm tapping, I'm hitting. I'm just hitting the plastic rod. I'm not because you know you don't want to mar the uh, the plate of the vehicle, the surface of the vehicle.
You can do um, Archer Fine Transfers has um, weld seams that you can you can deckle on, or they're like wet transfers that you can put right onto the right onto the plastic. Uh, I've used that in the past as well. They're they're pretty nice. If you can find them, but using the uh, using the plastic strip here is just gives you a nice effect, and especially when you're when you're dealing with something like this that you know you have like this is basically one strip that I've kind of wrapped, so I glue it here, and then. You know, wrap it around, glue it, wrap it around, glue it, wrap it around, glue it, um, and then go after it with the uh, with the knife. Um, you know, when you're using a, 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 a wet transfer, it's going to be a little bit tougher to do. And you can also use you can use. Um, you can use putty too, or, or um, polyurethane putty, I guess. That's what it is, like the, the Tamiya two-part epoxy, epoxy putty, sorry. Not polyurethane, polyurethane, epoxy putty. You can use that too, I've done that. Um, and that's good for um, things like, like lifting hooks and whatnot that have a small area, and you can just kind of wrap it around and, and work it in. But when you're doing a nice long line like this, I think using the the plastic rod is is the way to go because it it's straight. Uh, if I use if I use the strip of putty here, I have to worry about keeping it straight all the way through, and it's just not going to happen with me. So, so again, it depends on on the type of weld you're doing, where you're doing it. You know, is it a nice long straight one like this is? You know, then, then I think using the plastic rod is the perfect, the perfect solution. There we go. It's a bit of a process. You just keep adding. And you want to use this thin stuff, not the not the new like. There's a to me it has a, a, a like a kind of like a brighter green cap um, plastic glue that I guess it has more acetone in it, so it dries very quick. You don't want that one. You want this one, and you don't want their thicker glue that comes in the white cap bottle because that's just too thick and that'll, that will mar everything around it. So this is this is the perfect, this is exactly what you want to use, this is extra thin. You don't want anything else. I think Gunzi has an equivalent as well. Oh, well, I'm not as familiar with their, with their range. But if it, if it's that, that fast drying stuff, it's not going to, but you know the plastic isn't going to stay soft long enough for you to be able to do this. There we go. I think we're done. And then if you see, sometimes the the wells can be a little bit rough. So again, the nice part about the plastic cement is you can just kind of brush this on and that softens and kind of melts the little burrs and whatnot that come up. But you want some texture in there because you're going to go after this with a wash. So you want, you want some texture for the wash to go into so that it pops. But again, there's going to be a fair bit of mud and whatnot on this part of the vehicle, so. Yeah, well, that looks, I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so um, so while we're, we'll let that dry. I'll do the other welds um, off camera. And once you've seen one weld, you've seen them all. Um, so let's so let's look at another area that we can enhance. So this is a pretty easy one. So in the Tamiya kit, uh, on the back deck, you can see these little these little things here. Um, and initially, I thought they were kind of grab handles, but they're not. They're actually meant to represent lifting hooks. Um, but they're, you know, they're pretty featureless and, and whatnot. And oddly enough, in the kit, I'll just open this up here. Oddly enough, they do give you they do give you lifting hooks right here, that you can use. And on, I think, yeah, these are the same. They give you lifting hooks here. So um, we're going to use those. Um, but it's funny, they don't, they don't mention it in the instructions, or at least um, if they did, it, I certainly didn't pick up on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these out. I'm going to use our little nippers here. There's one. There's two. We'll put that back in the box. And then what we have to do here is simply remove these. So again, you know, with a good set of nippers, sprue cutters, cut that off. And the same thing on this one. So try and get as close as you can. Cut that off. Now you can see there's a bit, still a bit raised. So this is where using a chisel comes in handy. So this is the old Mission Models chisel, um, micro chisel. I've had this for years. Uh, Trumpeter has a whole whole range of them. So what you do is just gently kind of push. Another thing you can try using is a knife, like this, just to get rid of that. And again, you want to be careful because you don't want to gouge the plastic underneath it. You just want to kind of, there we go. And I think I gouged a bit of the plastic there, so let's go see how the chisel works on this one here. There we go. So just take a little bit off at a time. And then take a, maybe start with a, maybe when I got 400, yeah, 400 is always a nice grit to go with. So just take a little 400 to it and just sand that down. Now I can still see where that is. So that's going to be kind of a locator for me. Same thing with this. You can still see where the raised part was just ever so slightly, but that's good. That'll be going to tell you where you have to put. And then I have this. This is, uh, I don't know, this is like 800. This is almost like a almost like a polishing. To me, this isn't to me, but um, to me, it has all types of sponge sanders like this in there. They're great to use as well. So then, what you want to do now is you just want to make sure that the bottom of your hook here is pretty flush. So we'll just give that a wipe of the sand. Now we got pretty close to it with the nipper, so that's fine. And even if there's a bit of a burr. The liquid cement that we're going to use will melt it, but just to make sure there isn't anything. It's a good thing to me it gives you a few of these because I can see where these would easily get lost. So we'll take one and drop it into the vehicle. There we go. So we'll 
put one here, just like that, and we'll just add just a touch of cement, just to get it to, so we have a little bit of tackiness. Like so. Make sure it's straight. And then go at it with a little bit more and fix it in. Now there is a bit of a weld, so like they did weld these on, so if you wanted to go at this with, I mean, I'd, this is probably one of those things that using the, the two-part uh, epoxy putty would, would be good. I don't know that I'll do it on this one. Make sure it's straight, that's good. So let's do the second one. There, so line it up where it. Actually, let's maybe shave off a little bit more. Still barely see. Barely see where the or the other part that we cut off was, but it's still enough to give us a location. Fix it. Perfect. Done. We'll let that dry. And then another thing you could do, um, so just to address the weld seams that would be used to kind of fix the hooks onto the onto the, the surface there, um, is you could always soft like once the once these have dried and they set, you can always go after it with uh, uh, with with the to me, that extra thin cement to soften the plastic, and then go at it with maybe you know the the, the point of the end of a pointy set of uh, uh, tweezers just to get that weld seam detail in there. I think it's pretty small, and you know I don't know that the effort is worth. I don't think you'll get much reward for the effort on this, but but again, this looks these hooks look much better than um, you know what what we had before with the. Um, um, uh, with the, with the kind of the molded, solid molded plastic uh, on there. So it's strange, I don't know why they don't, it's not clear in the instructions that you can replace it with those, so. Um, the other thing that we're gonna be doing, and I'll probably do that off camera, but just as I think about it, is these head, like there's there's gonna be headlamps here, and you've got, uh, um, like there's a no-tech light here, you've got the main headlamps here. There's, there's wires that come in, and as far as I, and again, looking at your references, as far as I can tell, as I believe the wires work their way into the hull in under these things here, but they're but these are all connected. So I'm going to run some wires over, down, and into here, um, just to add that little bit. And again, you probably just use the lead solder for for doing that. Different grades of lead solder. So we'll talk about that next time. You'll see that that'll all be done, and but that'll be primed. I'll I'll call that out. Um, I think the we'll do. A little bit more painting on the interior here so <clears throat> I've just given this a coat the and to go back to the lacquer paints 
So this this racing white that Tamiya has in their lacquer paint range uh, seems to be a good match for the interior color of, of German vehicles, the, the Creme Weiss. Um, I'm not sure what the REL number is for that, but so I sprayed that on here. Um, now it's fair to mention that these hatches, because these would open up and would be exposed, like when the crew was, you know, had the hatches out or open, uh, these wouldn't be white, these would be gray. Um, but because these are closed, I'm not going to bother painting because you're not going to see them. Um, but certainly the hatches that are open, these parts are going to be the same panzer gray as the vehicle. Now what I might do is if I'm adding a lot of dust to it, um, you know, you're going to have dust on, on these panels here. But because these are closed most of the time, um, these will probably be a little bit more true to the panzer gray and not have as much dust on them. So again, it's little details like that that I think <coughs> make, a, make a model pop. So um, I think that's about it for... Um, for today's session uh we'll continue kind of building up and adding the you know the details to the vehicle but that's largely following instructions uh out of the out of the box um if i if i do end up doing anything uh, vastly different i'll make sure that we talk about that um, next time uh, but the next time you see this this will be primed in black using again the mr surfacer uh and we'll we'll, uh, we'll be at a point where we'll start to put some paint on it um again i'm pretty sure i'm going to use these uh the Tamiya um, lacquer range. This is their this is their uh, German gray, which I think is the same color as their XF63 in their in their acrylic line. Um, we're going to add um, maybe some of this this white to it, lighten it up. Maybe just a touch of blue. Um, again, I haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do, but I like the idea of putting a little bit of blue in there. Uh, or maybe this um, this is ghost gray. Again, from their lacquer line, this is a nice kind of a gray blue, uh, which I think might be nice for kind of lightening this up. Uh, and then I've also got some uh, some some pure insignia white here that uh, I'm not a big fan of using the white to lighten things up because it does give it a bit of a pasty and I find a bit of a chalky tone to the color. But anyway, we'll uh, I'll experiment with that and get the mixes right so that next time we get together um, everything will be laid out and I'll have the proportions for you. So so thanks for um, thanks for watching today. Um, we'll uh, we'll look forward to catching up uh, next time.